we're analyzing Crown Castle stock ticker CCI to see if it's a great business on sale. To determine if it's a great business, we're using the Select 6 analysis. The more metrics it checks out on, the more likely it is to be a great business. Then we're calculating the intrinsic value of Crown Castle and comparing it to the current market price to see if it's on sale. After, we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Crown Castle for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Crown Castle stock performance. Crown Castle currently trades at $134.42 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 32%. In the last five years, Crown Castle's stock price is compounding at 5% annually. In the last 10 years, their stock price is compounding at just under 6% annually. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, in the last 18 years, Crown Castle's stock price is compounding at 12% annually. The company is a real estate investment trust or a REIT. They also pay out significant dividends. Right now, they have a large 4.5% dividend yield, which is nearly three times better than the dividend yield from an S&P 500 ETF. Their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Crown Castle is trading $13 above their 52-week low. The business is down $60 from their 52-week high. Crown Castle is a large business. They have a $58 billion market cap. Learning more, Crown Castle International owns and leases roughly 40,000 cell towers in the United States. It also owns more than 85,000 route miles of fiber. It leases space on its towers to wireless service providers, which install equipment on the towers to support their wireless networks. The company's fiber is primarily leased by wireless service providers to set up small cell network infrastructure and by enterprises for their internal connection needs. Crown Castle's tower and fiber are predominantly located in the largest U.S. cities. The company has a very concentrated customer base, with more than 70% of its revenue coming from the big three U.S. mobile carriers. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on equity in the last five years to be above 12%. The average REIT earns about a 6% return on equity. By looking for a benchmark that's 12% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the overall quality of their business being about twice as good as average. Crown Castle has steadily increased their returns on equity throughout this time. As the business has added on more debt, their returns on equity have improved as it's made up a smaller percentage of the overall capital in the business. In their most recent fiscal year, Crown Castle earned 21 percent returns on equity. Averaged out over this time, Crown Castle is averaging an 11.6% average return on equity, so that's very close to that 12% we were looking for, but that's just slightly below that. Even though it's solidly above average, this is still an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we're taking a high-level look at the growth of their business. We want to see revenue and cash from operations growth in the last five years. This metric is all or nothing. Both of these have to be up for this to be a check. In the last five years, Crown Castle has grown their revenues by 30%, and their cash from operations have grown by 15%. This is moderate growth for both of these, and this is our first check coming in on metric number two. Next, for metric number three, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding over the last five years. Many REITs tend to be externally funded, meaning that they're either taking on more debt and or issuing new shares in order to raise capital for their business. Crown Castle is not much of an exception here. While they haven't diluted existing shareholders by as much as some other REITs, the company has issued about 4.5% additional shares outstanding throughout this time, which even though it's less than 1% each year, this is still an increase to their shares outstanding, and so this is an X on metric number 3. In metric number four, we're putting some of our previous metrics together. Here we're looking for cash flow per share growth in the last five years. As we've learned, Crown Castle has grown their cash from operations, but they've also diluted existing shareholders. Their cash from operations has grown faster than their shareholder dilution. This has led to cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Crown Castle, and this is a check on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we're split evenly, two checks and two X's on Crown Castle. Metric number five, we're evaluating how the business is using debt. We don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want Crown Castle's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of cash from operations that the business has produced in their last five years. Crown Castle has nearly 
doubled their net debt position throughout this time. They've added on more than $13 billion in net debt in the last five years. Currently, they have a $27.8 billion net debt position. And in the last five years, the business has produced just under $14 billion in cash from operations. That's about half of their net debt total. And so this is an axon metric number five, as it does look like the business is using a large amount of debt relative to their cash from operations. As a REIT, this may or may not be as much of a potential concern as it would be for some other types of businesses. Appropriate debt levels can vary depending on the types of assets that a business has. If this is a potential concern here, you'd want to dig into the company's filings to understand their debt profile in more detail. The company will break out how the debt is structured, when it matures, and what rates it's at, as well as any covenants associated with the debt. Again, though, this is an axon metric number five. Metric number six, the big metric of them all, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer a potential starting point for evaluation of Crown Castle. Crown Castle has just under an $86 billion total enterprise value, which takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives us a perspective of the economic reality of the company that's more similar to as if Crown Castle were a private company. We learned in our previous metric that the business has produced just under $14 billion in cash from operations in the last five years, meaning that in an average year, the business produces about $2.8 billion in cash from operations. When we divide their $2.8 billion of their average cash from operations by their nearly $86 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3.2% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield for Crown Castle. The company has produced $2.9 billion in cash from operations in their most recent fiscal year. So when we divide that by their $86 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3.3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Crown Castle. Both of these are slightly below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that's below that 5% risk premium we'd be seeking, meaning that this is an axon metric number six for Crown Castle. Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to throw this business out. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and it's not financial advice. You'll want to stick around as we perform our discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more concrete estimate of their fair intrinsic value before we give a final rating to Crown Castle. In the meantime, we can't forget about our bonus metric. As our bonus, we're looking at Crown Castle's dividend profile. Crown Castle pays a 4.5% dividend yield, which is well above average. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to see if their dividend is sustainable. We want Crown Castle's dividends to be supported by their cash flows in all five of these years. However, that has not been the case in any of these years, and Crown Castle has steadily increased their dividend payouts. So this could potentially be a concern here, especially as the business has taken on more debt throughout this time, and they've slightly diluted shareholders. Another thing worth mentioning is that Crown Castle has purchased around $10 billion in real estate in their last five years alone, which is more than 10% of their total enterprise value. While this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance and it's no guarantee for the future, this may be something that you would want to dig in and learn more about if you're potentially interested in Crown Castle for its abilities to pay dividends. As promised, everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Crown Castle, which brings us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Crown Castle. A discounted cash flow model is based on the predictability of a business's free cash flows. It's just like any other model in any other discipline, its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with Crown Castle's current cash flows and using historical growth assumptions to project these out into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these will be accurate and applicable going forward for Crown Castle. If we assume that the business grows their current free cash flows at a rate of 8% annually for the next 10 years, then in the 10 years from there that this growth rate would slow down and they're growing at just over 5% annually, adding in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their tangible net worth. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments in addition to his margin of safety requirements, then it looks like based on today's valuations of Crown Castle that a fair value for the business is only around $24 per share. That is significantly below what the business's current stock price is at. There are key points that you need to be mindful of here. Crown Castle has had a very high degree of business predictability in its past. This is not necessarily a guarantee for the future of the business. Their tangible book value could be materially understating the value of their assets. There are a number of different accounting factors at play when giving an estimate for this. Keep in mind that this is just an estimate. And this 15% rate of return would be including the company's 4.5% dividend yield, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. 
Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with a financial advisor. In just a minute, we'll talk about our final rating for Crown Castle, but we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with the qualitative factors supporting a potential long thesis for the business, number one, Crown Castle is virtually assured stable growth in its tower business. It holds long-term leases with contractual rent escalators, and its costs have similar certainties and are highly leverageable. Number two, carriers will have to continue investing heavily in their networks as mobile data usage continues to increase by more than 30% each year in the United States, and the Internet of Things and video trends make that pace likely to continue. Number three, Crown Castle is at the forefront of an industry transition towards small cells, that will be necessary with 5G networks. Then for the qualitative key points for a potential short thesis of the business, number one, Crown Castle's big city footprint makes its towers the most susceptible to small cell disruption. Even if Crown Castle's own small cell business is a major beneficiary, it could be too small to offset a significant reduction in tower use. Number two, with two of the three major U.S. wireless carriers owning significant amounts of their own fiber, Crown Castle lacks a sufficient customer base to ever make its fiber network very profitable. Number three, Crown Castle may be spending too much on small cells, which have fewer competitive advantages and lower margin profiles and returns on investment than towers. There you have it for a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of this business. Now it's time for our final rating of Crown Castle. In analyzing Crown Castle stock ticker CCI, we learned that the business earns above average returns on equity, just below the benchmark we were looking for. They've grown their revenues and their cash from operations in the last five years. They've diluted shareholders by a small amount, but they've still grown on a per share basis. The company has increased their leverage in the last five years, and it doesn't look like it's supported by their cash from operations. That could be something to look into. On both a current and an average basis of their cash from operations to their enterprise value, that yield did not look like it was above the yield of the 10 your treasury, and it was below the risk premium that we'd be seeking. Their dividends were not supported by their cash flows in any of the past five years. That could be something to do more work on as well. When we perform a discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, then from today's valuations of Crown Castle, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like a fair value for the company is only around $24 per share. There were some key factors as to why this could be understated for the business, so it's worth reiterating that this is not financial advice, it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. With all of these factors of our analysis in mind, it looks like Crown Castle is only a weak candidate for further research. Please don't let that discourage you if you're interested in the business. Please don't let that discourage you if you're potentially interested in the business, as it's important to dig in and do your work regardless. Either way, I'm happy to make an analysis of Crown Castle. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Crown Castle with me and have a great day.